Jared Poland Fronos Photo.com and welcome to Raw Edit of the Week number 84. That's right, we're up to 84 weeks of raw edits. They're spread out a little more than they used to be, but that makes it much easier for me to make them. Uh, so this week we have this file. Oh yeah, by the way, coming up after this file, you can see my edit and Adam's edit of Raw Edit of the Week 83, as well as a critique showing some of your edits. And also Adam and I talked face-to-face -to, -face to see whose edit we liked more, being that it was his shot. Uh, so this shot, I think, has some major potential to be an interesting edit. I saw how the photographer edited it, 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 and I thought he did a great job. Now, I don't want to show it to you because I don't want you guys to try and copy what he did. I think you can make this old world. I think you can make it futuristic. I think there's a lot of directions you can take it. It was taken with a Canon EOS 60D, 1 80th of a second F8, ISO 320, 18 millimeters with the 18 to 55 kit lens that Canon supplies with you. It's a perfectly fine image. I like what's going on. This metal, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. It looks good. The steam coming out. Um, you, yeah. yeah, I wish I could show you what the guy did, but you can, you're going to come up with some great edits, I think. So what you can do is call your edit Frono's Photo Raw Edit of the Week 84. Be sure to post it on Facebook, but definitely put it in the Fro Forum because that is where we pick the critiques from. So there you have it. Let's see what you guys come up with. If you'd like to send in your raw, uh, a, a raw file, don't send in a JPEG. Don't send me this file edited. I'm looking for your raw file that you would like people to edit. Send it to fronosphoto at gmail.com. So coming up right now, we've got Adam's edit followed by my edit, followed by us talking about it, followed by your critique. Welcome to this week's raw edit. And this week we have a file that I shot of my buddy Nick. And this was shot with uh, Hasselblad H3D231. It's a medium format digital camera, SLR. Um, pretty cool. It's a few years old, but it still does the trick. Um, Nick and I were out in Queens at uh, Triborough Bridge Park. Um, obviously, he's under the bridge. And uh, this was um, something that I lit with just a bunch of uh, SB800s that were bare, controlling it with a pocket wizard. Um, and this particular shot was just a test shot. Um, and test shot meaning that this was one of the shots that he's standing in place. I'm just trying to get the lighting together. And this was a test. Um, obviously, there are more shots in this series. But um, I felt comfortable sharing a test shot. So here we go. Uh, one of the things that I noticed off the bat is that um, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it, the white balance is a little bit off. And um, I think that that was actually my bad. Um, I think that when I, was sh when I shot this on the camera, I actually cha had changed the white balance and I didn't reset it, which is a common mistake. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to make excuses, but you know, when you look at the camera, particularly on the screen of a camera like that, which is an older camera, um, it's very difficult to see the screen in bright daylight, uh, which is, I think, a lot of the reason why people shoot tethered. This was not an option to shoot tethered this day. I was shooting to card. Anyway, here is the resultant image that I shared for this week, and let's just do somewhat of an edit. Now, there's a couple of different things here. Um, his shirt has a kind of a nice grayish look to it, so I'm going to just hit the W key here. I'm going to get the picker, and I'm just going to pick like a neutral gray target and see what that does for my white balance. That really made things very green. Not a fan of that, that, that kind of greenish hue right there. So let's just go back and see what that looks like beforehand. Yeah, it's a little bit... We got to kind of come up with something a little bit better for that because I'm not in love with the way that that's looking right there. So I'm just going to kind of manually do this and let's see, we're just going to bring that down over there. That's actually not too bad. Um, let's just hold on to that for now because we're going to make a lot of other adjustments. As far as the exposure goes, uh, that's it's kind of cool. I'm going to actually affect more of this region right here. I'm going to bring my highlights down just a bit. And I'm going to bring my blacks down and I'm going to mask it off holding down the option key. So I want to see the underexposed areas as they come in. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And I'm just going to pop up my shadow detail a little bit because I want to make sure we have definition over here. 
and I'm just going to jump a little bit of whites into that, something like that. Um, contrast, I'll just push the contrast up somewhere around there, something like that. And let's just look at the before and the after. And already we, we already have a more kind of a three-dimensional shot. Um, let me just see what the exposure is doing. Yeah, we don't really have any exposed, overexposed areas. It's a little hot. I mean, look, if I had my way, I would have loved to have shot with modifiers and had, you know, some help with this because it was pretty windy. And if I started setting up umbrellas and sandbags and all this kind of stuff, this was kind of a guerrilla shoot. So, again, I'm not making excuses, but... It's very hard, I would say, to shape light really nicely when you're shooting with bare speed lights. Um, let's get some clarity on this action here. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little bit muchness. You know, we're only going to just hit, hit a hint of clarity up there. I actually want to bring my exposure down just a hint. Even though we're not overexposed, I just want to bring it down just a hint right there. Somewhere, somewhere around that. And if we look... Um, before and after. I mean, that's a pretty stark difference right there. I'm also just going to look over here. We were shooting at 125th at um, ISO 100. Now, the Hasselblad really shines at ISO 100. You can probably shoot up to about ISO 200. 400, you're pushing it. Even though you can max out at ISO 1600, you're going to get the most clarity at ISO 100. Um, Maybe if I had to do this again, maybe I would have shot at 200 and a slightly faster shutter speed just to close down some more ambient light. But I'm not, I'm not upset with it. Uh, I had the 120 on here, which is kind of like a 67, 70 millimeter equivalent in 35 millimeter. Um, it's kind of a big honking lens. It's about the size of a 70 to 200, even though it's a, a prime. Um, so yeah, so let's let's just kind of keep working with that right there. Um, I'm just going to just add a little bit of sharpening, so I'll just grab an eye over here. Just going to pop that up. And we don't have to do cra go too crazy. I mean, we've got plenty of detail. Something like that. You know, if you just go one-to-one, -one, I mean, it's, it's, it's there. Um, let's see what else we're going to do over here. Uh, do we want to add any vignetting? Let's just see what that looks like. I'm just going to add a little lens vignetting. See how that looks for us. Yeah, it kind of adds a little bit of drama. I don't mind that, actually. I like the way it kind of closes things off on the top over there. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I mean, I'm sure that there's some folks that are going to want to crop this image. Um, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, let's just see what a crop looks like really quickly. Let me bring it down to about here. That's not bad, actually. You know what? I didn't really, um, again, this is a test shot. This was not really shot to crop, let's say. Um, but um, I wouldn't mind losing like this little bit over here. I find that kind of distracting. So let's just keep going with this. It's a little better. I mean, it's kind of dead on center, which is like, yeah, dead on center. Um, I don't want to, let's see. Something like that. And then what I might just do is I might just use the, uh, the spot healing brush just to get rid of some of these little kind of nuggets that just are residually showing up in the image right here. And just to kind of clean this little white space up because it's not... This thing I'm not... I'm not going to bother with that right now. Let's just see what this looks like. Uh, it's a little bit... Eh, it's not so great. Let's go back in here. Let's just redo that little guy. I think we got to kind of do something like more, more profound, something like that. Actually, probably down in there. That's more of the same region. And this one, I think I got to just make that one a little bit bigger. Let's just close that up. See how this looks. It's still not quite right. I mean, this is something that I would probably want to go into Photoshop with or something and just use the healing brush just to kind of clean it up because um, it would it would be that important to me <sighs> the problem is that this is kind of like a grayish color and then if I basically use like the brush tool let's say I go into like to dodge this thing up a bit um, it's going to change the uh, let's just see the overlay on that real quick it's going to change this color right here you know you're going to see like that kind of white spot and yeah it doesn't work anyway Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back into this tool. We're going to reset it, get rid of all those kind of like little guys that didn't work out. 
and uh, let's see. Yeah, there's got to be a way I can do this. I'm just going to keep keep going in and cropping it. Why not? We'll just take her down just a little bit more there. Sorry, Nick. And let's see what that looks like. Not too bad. Not too bad. I can live with that. That's a lot better, actually. Um, yeah. Let us work with that. Uh, let's see here. So, again... Um, Skin tones aren't too bad. Um, I might just drop the saturation down. Let's just see what a little bit of desaturation does for us. It's actually not too bad. Somewhere, somewhere around there like that. Maybe add just a little bit more clarity. And just, again, we'll just drop the uh, exposure down just a hair. So sensitive. Um, let's see. Something like that. Maybe I'll just split the difference on the saturation right here. All right, so that's what we have going on right here. And I'm just gonna maybe just move this thing over just a hair. Let's see how that looks. That's not too shabby, actually. I can live with that. Um, yeah, so let's save that as our, as our snapshot one. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking at this thinking it might be black and white. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good as a black and white. I had a little bit more contrast in there. Not too crazy. I don't want to lose too much detail. Um, still think we could drop this down just a hair. Not too much. Something like that. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow detail because I still want to maintain the separation over here. Um... Yeah, that kind of that kind of looks cool. That's that kind of works a little bit well for me. I just want to see what a little bit of toning does for me over here, and um, I'll just I'm just gonna use one of my presets over here. That's not bad. I could live with that. That's not bad at all. I don't mind that at all as a black and white. So I'm gonna save that as a snapshot too. Um, let's see, create. There we go. All right, so there we go. So we've got our color, and we've got our black and white. And uh, let's get off and see what Jared's got. So here it's my turn to edit raw edit of the week number 83. This file is from a Hasselblad, Hasselblad, Hassie. I have not ever used this camera. Now this is Adam's camera, and he did this test sample image just to give us some room to play with and edit. So what would I do here? You know, I probably will go black and white, but that's what I'll just say in the first part. But the, the, the file is insane. When you zoom in and just see the clean, how clean it is and how tight it is and, and the sharp. I mean, look how smooth the skin is. Um, yeah, it's ISO 100. Again, much larger sensor. Uh, these cameras are amazing with what they can do. I'm just going to do my thing. I may crop it too. I may crop it as well. I shouldn't say too. I should say as well. You can follow what I'm doing here. Some clarity, boom. Love my thickness and the contrast. Let's see what the, the, the curves do. That tightens up that. We'll go one more higher and see what it does, boom. And let's see if we wanna open up the shadows underneath the bridge a little bit. Not too much. I don't wanna go like this because this, again, looks fake, because you know there's not that much light up there. So if you just do a little bit just a little bit, you're gonna see a difference. So now I wanna get into the crappie McCropperson tool. Aspect ratio, I don't want the original, I would like a two by three ratio. Is this original two by three? Nope. Custom, custom. Enter custom. Two, three, boom. Or maybe I'll go square, I don't know. Because this is the aspect ratio. What I'm looking for when cropping this, guys, is the same thing I'm looking for if I was to do this in the camera. There's the pole right here and there's the pole right here. So I'd either like to make it horizontal and line it all up perfectly without cutting off his hands, leaving enough room, or I wanna go back to vertical 
which is going to be a little more difficult because he's not lined up perfect. So I'm going to come down to make this so I want to leave just a, mount, a little bit of headroom. That's probably too much, a little less. I want to center it so that his elbows are even on both sides. Boom. A little bit more. Boom. There we go. That is the type of picture that I, I would take. So now I want to work on it a little closer. The eyes are looking great. I haven't even done very much other than contrast and exposure to this file and, and a little bit of the uh, shadows. I want a little bit more white in here, so I'm going to pump that up. Some burnt sienna. See, I really don't need the black levels here. I don't really need to move them that much because I don't want to lose the background that we brought out here, and it wasn't doing very much to his shoulder or his arm. I'm not going to play with cleaning up his eyes. I just I like the thickness of the file. That's my style of, uh, of this. Let's see what the highlights bring out. Not too much, but I want to, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump the highlights because I like the, diff the contrast in the face. Now let's go back, see, show you linear. Flat, medium, a little better, strong, boom. I love the thickness of it. I'm going to stop right here, and we're going to see Adam's edit. All right, Adam, it's, it's, it's safe to look now and get your reaction. Wow. <laughs> um, huh. What's your gut telling you? Um, you burned it. Yeah. It's funny because when too, I saw it's, it's too crispy for me, man. And when I saw I, when I saw what you did, it plays into your style, and this plays into my style. And you could even see I cropped it two by th you know two to three ratio, um, just like if it was a thirty five millimeter, you kept it the the ratio of the Hassie. And I do love you know the the softness of the grays. I think when you put them next to each other is when you see the major differences in. In, in edits. I like some things from mine and I like some things from yours. Well, I think that, that the, um, the bridge is so epic mm. that, um, you know, by cutting it away like you did, you kind of lose a little bit of the impact of the image and it just becomes kind of like a, a dude portrait. Sure. Um, so, you know, like I was saying when I did this image, this is a test image. And for people that, that don't know what that is, it's basically an image where you just get your light set up and you just have your model or your assistant or somebody stand in so that you can kind of just kind of see where you're at. You know, this was not the resultant image. This is not what, you know, we were going with here. But, um, you know, I'm a little bit more proprietary with my images now and I'm not really dying to share like a final with sure. the entire planet. Well, but, I like uh, I, I, you. You always have the that that grayish feel to it. Not grayish feel, but it's a some kind of tone, some kind of like silvery tone that goes to yours. And I, and I obviously went over the top. And interestingly, we've talked about this because I was a triac shooter and you were a T-Max shooter, and um, you know the dynamic range of those two, f you know, actual film emulsions kind of more lend themselves to how we tend to expose our black and whites now. Yeah. You know, I was always more of the silvery tone kind of um, guy when I developed my images. Um, and perhaps you went for the more contrasty stuff. And there's no right and wrong here. I mean, you know, they're, it's both cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like the way, the way you took yours, it almost looks a little bit like a photocopy. You know, it's just got that, it's just so burned in in the, uh, in the uh, overexposed regions. But um, but it still keeps the details where I wanted them. This is what right. I you know that that's what I look for. And these are the same discussions I had back in school when teachers would say, "Well, you blew out the there's no highlights, uh, there's no detail in the highlights under the bridge." And I'm like, "But excuse me, teacher, that is not the part of the image that anybody gives a crap about. You know, there's no reason that that needs to be there because the focus is the person." But I think that the ribs of the bridge, of the underpinnings of the bridge, and the struts of the bridge help to frame the subject in this case. And I, I discussed that in mine, and I also did leave the underside in there. I actually brought the shadows back. I used the shadows to bring it back, but not too far. Right, right, exactly. I mean, look, um, I can say that shooting 
to card with the Hasi outside is is more of a challenge than sitting with the Nikon in some respects because the screen kind of disappears in bright light. You really can't see it. You need to um, then you need to put a black cloth over your head. I absolutely do. <laughs> um, so you know there's 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 certainly challenges. I mean I would I I talked about that a little bit in my video. Um, I would have much preferred to shoot with modifiers and had much more shaping. But again, you need people to help you. You need you know to you know deal with things like wind and things like that sure. and this was kind of a guerrilla shoot and I'm not again I said in the video I'm not making excuses you know I don't think it's like the most spectacular image but I still think it's cool I like the framing on it sure and 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 to close it that this was really an opportunity for everybody to play with a file that's from a Hasselblad you know sure. it's uh, not every day that you get to to download one of those files so uh, thank you and you know and, and no, no problem. And you know, I, I recently just came off of a really fun shoot um, on location, and I think I might have something um, that we could do in the future that would be maybe a little bit more fun for people, a little bit more versatile, um, more color, more 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 stuff going on. So um, hopefully, we can get a look at that at some point too. Yeah, that would be fun. It this, I mean, it really is different. The amount of dynamic range that you have. You know, with one file to the next is, I mean, you know, from the Hasselblad to like, you know, the Nikon, unless you're really shooting a D800, um, you know, the difference is pretty dramatic. Sure. All righty. Thank All you right, for hey. thank you for doing it. All right. All right. Well, my pleasure, and um, I, I'm really excited to see that people had fun with this file as well. Yep. Yep. Some cool stuff, and uh, thank you guys for all your edits. And next week. You know you've got Raw Edit of the Week 84, so play with that file. Let's see what you come up with. Throw it up in the forum. Throw it on Facebook, and uh, you can always submit your images. Until next time, Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Wow. Just as my dad called. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone ahead and I pulled out some of your edits. I hope you enjoyed watching Adam and I edit the file and also talking, discussing it. So here is an edit. I like the processing that was done to this, but what baffles me is how it was cropped. I don't understand the off-center crop in this vertical nature. It really is painful to me to see this amount of space here with only this amount of space here. So that is why I'm picking it out. I like the processing. I just don't think that the, the, the crop is on par. Oh, hey, it's that girl. Uh, I forget her name. She's a gymnast, and everybody was throwing this in pictures because she's got that face going on. Um, I thought this was a cool edit, bringing it back to an old world feel. Uh, very much edited right for the subject, more so than the background, because as you can see, this is all blown out. But to me, that doesn't distract. That just you know, makes this image fine. I like the color. I like the way it's pulled back. I like the feel of it. This is a nice black and white, maybe a little bit too far on going with their eyes when I, I should speak English when I say going with their eyes a little bit too far with fill light in there or bringing the eyes out because they look too fake they're glowy McGloerson they look fake but I think with a little bit of contrast just a little bit more it will tighten it up it is a really sharp and solid crop and edit I think it looks good um, so I like that that is over the top and interesting uh, look at this, the clouds that they put in there not a major fan of the clouds in the background and just showing you what I think an over-the-top edit would look like of the face it kind of gives it that fakey McFakerson look and that's what it has um, Superman really nice job by the way of putting that S logo into the shirt that looks pretty good cutting them out of the background and putting them onto the American flag uh, so that worked I just put that out there uh, I thought this was a nice crop too you know Critiquing the photo, a crop like this tends to work really well when somebody crosses their arms. I don't know if you can see it, but that would work well. I like the processing, I like the color, and I like how you're drawn in by the vignette. That is freaky. Look at those eyes and look at those wings. It's just a nice over-the-top edit, which is perfectly fine to see. This is a very thick black and white. Maybe a little too much for my liking, but even though I like a lot of thickness in black and white. Uh, I would just bump the exposure slightly but it's a nice tight crop. I think it works well. It keeps an aspect ratio of a 35 millimeter more so than with the Hassie. I do like this one. Wow. Look at those pants. That is just it. Wow. I don't know why. I probably wanted to pick it to say that looks over the top. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how to kill the face. Like, it's gone. Um, 
too, too rough. I pulled this because look how strong the eyes still are when this thing is cropped 8 million times, 8 million miles. It still looks really good. Hey, yes, I love that football arm tattoo. That's kind of funny. He doesn't have that in real life, does he? No, I think somebody put that there. That's cool. It looks like the, the laces of a football. I thought this was funny, stretching it and playing with it. Nice job. I'm Batman. Um, we want to have Batman back. And then Christian Bale's like, I've retired. I'm angry. I'll go away for eight years and come back. I'm Batman. Oh, that's cool. Nice job. Uh, that's a solid edit. I like this black and white a lot. Really nice job there. Uh, nice crop. I like the framing on this. I like this color edit. The background looks good. This guy looks good. Nice job. Really nice color there. Nice advertisement. Just do it for the Nike. I don't think we're back to the beginning yet. I don't think. Are we? No. I like the color here. I like the composition. I like that the, there's a good amount of headroom. It still works well. I like that. Um, Oh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. A little, I would have liked to have seen less headroom here. A square crop could have worked very well, but I do, you know, the processing, processing is fine. It's, it's different, and it works. <sighs> Ugh. Dutch angles kill me. I mean, it makes me sick, honestly, to, sick and, like, my stomach sick, to see this, to see these lines, to see them running that way. It's just, I don't take these... Dutch angle images. I know a lot of people do, and I'll say it again. My reasoning for not doing them is if an image isn't strong enough to stand on its own vertically or horizontally, and you need to bend it to give it interest, it's probably not worth taking or it's probably not worth using. So that's my critique on that. And this was the first one because I remember that crop. So there you have it. The new raw edit of the week is of that train. It's number 84. You can download it in the forum. You can tweak it, play with it, do whatever you want with it. Put it up in the forum as a raw edit of the week number 84. Don't forget, you can put it on Facebook. Everybody likes to see what you guys do with it. And I thank you and Adam for all of your support. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Are you subscribed yet on the YouTube channel? Well, Click this subscribe button right here. Also click this box if you want to be emailed every time I upload a new video so you can get the latest video uploads as they happen. And also, if you haven't signed up for the free user's guide, sign up right here. Put your name, email address in here. Hit send it. You will get a free ebook sent to your email as well as a link to a 60-minute long video on flash photography in the studio that Adam and I created. So please do that. And we'll see you.